Helldivers 2 is one of those magical games that come out every once in a while. Like, when it creates that magical atmosphere between everyone who plays it and makes everyone who doesn't feel left out. Aside from the gameplay, the aesthetic of the game is pretty much unmatched. I mean, with the bugs, you pretty much have an alien hide-and-seek session with high-level explosives, and you really feel like you're the only squad that can take down these larger-than-life beasts. It feels a bit like Alien, where you're constantly running your guns down to their last bullet to fight off the swarms. On the one hand, I do think that the Terminids play unfairly. On the other hand, I can't deny that being overwhelmed all the time is actually a really fun style of gameplay that translates really well for viewing, too. And this goes double for the Automatons. No other game feels quite like warfare. No COD game feels as desperate, no Battlefield game feels as intense or daring. Nothing. The truth is, a lot of this game survives on how it feels to fight these enemies, for example, in the gray expanses of Malevolon Creek. It always feels like it could be the middle of the day or dead of night, and the battlefield is just covered in factory smoke or gunpowder. The aesthetic, which is another pillar of the game, is just so hard to capture, and this game does it beautifully. All of the planets are uniquely fantastic. All of the bugs and bots are well designed visually. It's the same thing with giving Helldivers a cape. Yeah, it's probably just to have another bit of armor in the store, but it's another thing that elevates this game just past a normal team-based shooter. There's no actual reason for Super Earth to give players a cape. It's just cool, and I respect that. But honestly, the average bot mission feels like Judgment Day from T2, where you're dolphin diving wherever there's room, throwing nades like no one's business, and emptying full mags of liberty right into the thorax or motherboard of the enemy. Every single time you load in, you go to war, calling in orbital strikes, resupplies, rescuing citizens, fueling up dropships, and escaping by the skin of your teeth to the extraction. It's kind of a joke on Twitter and other platforms, but you genuinely feel like you've been drafted every time you pick up the controller. But you don't even mind because you want to defend Super Earth, which brings me to the next invaluable quality of this game. Communism, sorry, democracy, and Super Earth. Now listen, obviously politically this game is a bit risque, if you're stupid. But this game's a lot more feel-good than you think. I mean, it's set in a universe where we've achieved world peace. It's kind of satire, especially the bits about being a traitor when you even talk about not supporting Super Earth which you shouldn't. But it's actually kind of fine, because you would be a traitor. Like, there's not really much of a reason not to support Super Earth. In this world, not only do we have world peace, but even though this fight seems too big, we're actually winning. Like, just by playing the game, canonically we keep hitting our mandates, rescuing citizens, and destroying the enemy. And if you think about it, the KD ratio for soldiers and helldivers compared to the ones in real life is genuinely really good. Because the entirety of Earth is working together, and we're fighting the world's biggest war a million times more efficiently than we would in real life. But more on Super Earth, yes, it is satire that will gladly give our lives for the Super Earth Empire. And that's saying anything against the cause is high treason worth execution. Which it is. And every time you die, you just get replaced with another Helldiver who has the exact same gear and loadout. Yes, it's all satire. But again, there's no reason to feel bad about it. A lot of stories these days feel the need to have complex villains with complex goals, like COD and others, but not this one. In this one, we're the good guys, united as humans, fighting the socialist robots and disgusting bugs who always attack first and have clearly taken over what used to be Super Earth territory. This is your reminder to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. And that brings me to the next critical aspect of this game, teamwork. In this game, you have your very own ship and NPC crew. It's where you'll do all the purchasing of upgrades and stratagems. Now, if you dock with other ships, you can get up to a four-player squad of Helldivers, all fighting for democracy in Super Earth. And this is fantastic. It's another case of great timing because we have more competitive games now than ever where you fight against pretty much everyone. You can have a squad in these games, but at the end of the day, the fight is more against other people rather than to win and work together. Sometimes when there's loot to be had, you'll impede on your own teammates and vice versa. Not in this game. In this game, all the permanent upgrade loot you get is shared between the squad. The more comrade sorry, brothers in arms you have, the easier the game gets, the more loot you get, the faster you level up, the more fun you have. It's easy to queue up with randoms too, and on an intergalactic scale, we have live updates on major order progress and actual rewards when everyone works together even between squads. Now, obviously solo, this is a little bit of an issue because solo this game is pretty much impossible past hard mode. Like, you can do it on a technical level, but to be realistically expected to complete a mission and extract is a little bit unreasonable on Helldive. But that's why the random queuing works for the most part. That said, if you don't have this game, but you're thinking about buying it, maybe buy some friends first. On the flip side, the gameplay actually isn't that innovative. I mean, the stratagems are all very cool. The ships of you and your squad actually being in the sky and launching your weapons and gear is legitimately epic. And it's also helped by the next-gen requirements of the game that you can see hell bombs and other explosions in the distance. When you're off, somewhere separate from your squad. But the stratagems in general are one of those things that are perfect for a video game. You can just have massive explosions and giant laser bazookas because it doesn't like 
cost money or anything like it would in a film, and everyone likes those things, so why not put them in the game? Especially because large explosions and laser cannons and mechs don't even really help as much as they probably should. There's not really anything that ever feels overpowered, at least on Helldive. And that's because short of a planet-destroying explosive, nothing really can be. The way the game is set up, with enemies constantly spawning in on top of you, it makes it feel like you can never have enough firepower or people on your team. The threat is always escalating and the players are always struggling to compensate for it. You never, ever feel like a champion in this game, you feel like you're lucky to make it to extraction. But there are definitely some issues with progression. One, I don't know why the rare samples are easier to find than common samples 100% of the time. I usually have like triple the amount of rare samples compared to common. Also, I think you level up a little bit too slow, and technically there's not actually a reward for killing enemies in this game, it's just completing the objective. If you're gonna add a level 150 cap, that's really cool, but give me an incentive to achieve it. But this is definitely the way in which Helldivers has started to fail a little bit, which I've kind of been dancing around for this entire video. This problem of progression is a little bit worse than people are talking about. Look, I get it, right? They added a level 150 cap, that's great, but there is no reason to get up that high. The truth of it is, they haven't really added anything game-changing since launch. Besides, like, a couple of mechs and a couple of war bonds, which are great. And I think the war bonds are also a pretty cool thing worth grinding, even if it is significantly slower than just buying them and then upgrading them that way. But at the end of the day, I can run around the map and get all the samples. I can get all the requisition slips and medals that I can find. That's great. But I don't really have anything to use them on anymore. And I'm not going to just grind weapons in a war bond if I don't want to use them for anything, especially with some of the meta builds that have come around. I genuinely think that if they want to save this game, and get people back on that they need to release a new race or something. You can either fight the bots or the bugs. It has been that way for months now, and this is not a bad thing. I'm not calling this a bad game whatsoever. But at the end of the day, there is a reason that player counts are dwindling. I love Helldivers 2 as much as the next person, but I need reasons to keep coming back to it. I think it'd even be as simple as just putting some rewards at every 10 levels of progress. Like maybe saying, hey, you get this skin or this throwable when you reach level 60, 70 or so. And honestly, if you really want to keep player count high, what I would do is that once you reach level 150, you just get all present and future war bonds. Yes, it is sacrificing a little bit of money, but everyone would want to grind to level 150 100%. I think it could really save the player counts, and then the people who are too impatient to grind to that level would just buy the war bonds anyway. And then when you get to level 150 and you have all those war bonds, one, you're going to keep playing until the next one comes out, and two, you're going to grind everything you can out of them because you just earned all of them. Or better yet, throw in Stratagem Hero for free, I don't know. But I think there's a pretty good way to make it so that you can still make money and keep your player count high. But make no mistake, this is the reason that Helldivers 2 is starting to fail. It's losing players, and while the concurrent player count is still pretty high compared to other games, I don't think it would take that many changes to keep it as exceptional as it used to be. But that's just my take on it. But with no XP for killing enemies, I get that in theory, but then I just get annoyed when enemies show up and I have no incentive to fight other than to end the fight. I think it'd be smart to make it so that you get 1 XP for every 2 kills in a game, and then just cap it at 150 total to keep people from just farming in one match. I always play on level 9 and get lots of kills and a 250% XP bonus, and I still feel like leveling is too slow. The dolphin diving is also kind of a classic thing as something some of the old COD games did. And then there's the missions and enemies themselves, along with the worlds they take place on. The missions are pretty standard, but fun in a simple way, and surprisingly kind of realistic. Like, yeah, you're pressing directional buttons to access complex systems, but otherwise, taking down machine factories and bug nests is like the first thing you do in a war against these guys. Along with aligning signal towers, loading up heavy artillery, and other stuff. Obviously, I hope they add many more to increase variation, but the ones we got are still pretty good. And then there's the weapons play and gear loadouts. The weapons sound and feel terrific, they're suitably advanced, but you still kind of get the gist, and they're pretty well balanced seeing as you'll probably use stratagem weapons more often than not anyway. The only problem I have with the movement is that the dolphin diving is fun, but sometimes it doesn't do anything and just slows you down, while other times it basically makes you invincible and you survive way more than you should, the former usually being a bots thing and the latter being a bugs thing. Speaking of the enemies, I think there's a few balancing issues with them. Like in the beginning, everyone's afraid of the bots. There's the bugs, and then there's the bots. Automatons actually get pretty chill if you learn the mechanics of the game well enough. And while sometimes way too many are just dropped on you in the higher difficulties, I don't usually feel cheated or like the game has some vendetta against me when I play against the bots. It feels pretty fair. 
and then there's the higher level bugs. I actually don't feel like I get high volumes of them, it's usually individual ones that one shot me or just plain don't play fair. And I feel like this was to combat the bots actually shooting back at you, so they made the bugs more aggressive, but it's a little bit too much. Even with a full squad, I found myself dying constantly and losing all of my reinforcements to the bugs over unfairness, while the bots were more challenging but more fair. With the bots, you kinda always have something you can do to take the different types out. Always a strategy you can employ. With the Terminids, you kinda just spray and pray. It feels like the bots are a higher difficulty mode, but the bugs are an easier mode that can be more frustrating. Especially Chargers. I think the Chargers and Rocket Devastators are the two most unfair enemies in the entire game, but that's just me. It's interesting how your opinions towards enemies can change over the course of your playtime. I think in the beginning, everyone hated the Bile Spewers, but as those have gotten more trivial, other stuff has become more annoying like the Chargers for me personally. But to kind of wrap up this review, Helldivers is the best feel-good game we've gotten in a while. A game where everyone who plays is winning and having fun every time. A game where we have world peace under communist, sorry, democratic rule. And we don't have to feel bad about killing bugs and Soviet automatons that would do the same to us. Finally, we've been blessed with the male's desire to fight next to his brothers in arms and die for a cause greater than himself. Over and over again, for democracy, for Super Earth. It's the guilty pleasure without the guilty, and it's a 10 out of 10 game. Obviously, the score only applies while they're still innovating and adding new things to the game, which they could be a little faster with all that. But updating and giving unique conditions and major orders and the like, I think really helps this game out. But I definitely think this game deserves the 10 out of 10 badge, as you would have to go out of your way not to have a 10 out of 10 experience while playing it. And I think it's a legitimate contender for more than one Game of the Year category. Anyway, if you enjoyed, I'd appreciate it if you'd like the video and subscribe to the channel. For liberty, freedom, democracy, for Super Earth. Play nice people.